미소에 난 취한 것 같아 자꾸만 웃음이 나 어린아이 장난 같아 So I've been thinking about the 21-90 day rule and what that means as far as forming a habit and um, making it a solid habit in your life. So if you don't know about the 21-90 day rule, it's basically it takes, the rule is, it takes 21 days to form a habit and 90 days for it to make a solid impact in your life, to basically make that a foundation habit in your life. And I thought that it would be a good thing to talk about today, um, forming habits, and just sit down and have a, a nice little studio art chat with you. I'm having some matcha today in my favorite little puppy cup. <laughs> so I thought, uh, yeah, let's just sit and talk about this for a second. But I, because when I read about that rule, I was thinking, how well does that fit into my own 30, 60, 90 day sketchbook challenge that I'm currently working on? Um, of which I am legitimately halfway there now. Woohoo! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, we're already here. I will say it has been a struggle for sure because there's days where I struggle working all day, coming home, cooking and doing all the things that I need to do and then having to come in here and make sure I dedicate an hour to two hours on doing something in my sketchbook. Now, it legitimately does not have to be that long, but of course I'm sharing it with everybody. I'm sharing it with you. I'm on Instagram. If you want to see daily posts, you'll find me there, Reese Osborne Studios again. And so maybe if I was not sharing on social media, well, no, I know. If I wasn't sharing on social media, it wouldn't quite be such an involved drawing, painting at all. It would probably be a lot smaller and simpler. But that's what I'm doing because I'm sharing it with you and I want to inspire you. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm sharing myself um, and my work um, on Instagram and YouTube. It, it took me a while to even get comfortable with that thought. But so anyways, I thought we would do this, this format for a, a switch up and just chat a bit about forming habits today. So if you want to join me and get a tea, coffee, whatever, uh, whatever you like to drink, water, go grab yourself, pause the video, grab it, and come back and join me in my little space. So concerning uh, the sketchbook challenge that I'm doing, the 30, 60, 90 day sketchbook challenge, um, what I wanted to say about doing your own art challenge, if you choose to, going back to the habit thought, um, I feel that sketchbook is a really good way to start a habit if you're trying to form one. If you feel like if you feel like you need to be drawing more often, it's a really good way to get started. Um, it's even been helpful for me. Even though I've drawn all my life, I, I've never done a daily challenge like this. And I'm not saying that you have to, but I think it's a really great way if you're struggling with that problem. The one thing I feel is important is that you don't judge yourself. Um, no matter where you are in your own personal creative journey, your art journey, no matter what you want to do, even if you don't know how to draw, but you want to do something creative, you can just get in here and play with colors. You can buy yourself a very simple set of colors, watercolors, um, acrylics, um, gouache, whatever you think looks interesting and play with it from there. Of course, every media has its own quirks or rules that have to be applied to it. But once you understand those basic rules, it's fairly easy. But if you're intimidated by color, I would say you could just get a number two pencil and just start doodling. Just use the pencil and see how far you can take that. Um, and even if you wanted 
And uh, you've probably seen people rub their fingers with graphite. Um, as kids, we often do that. The bad thing about that, that the oil on your hands can get into the paper and cause the graphite to stick. So a suggestion I have, a tip, is just using some paper towels and rub the graphite that way, and that way it smudges it a lot easier. Or you, they actually have um, like a rubbing stick, um, if you know what those are. It's a rubbing stump is what they call those. <laughs> Regardless if you like abstract art or realism, um, doodling, whatever you like, I think that uh, having a lifelong effort towards improving your drawing skills is always a good positive thing. It's not a bad investment. I don't feel like it's a waste of your time. And if you hear any noises, my bird Scoopy's right here making noises himself. <laughs> um, but I have always struggled to try to improve my drawing skills. And sometimes it impacts your work and sometimes it doesn't. Matter of fact, a lot of the great masters, uh, the ones that became more abstract, like Pat Picasso, for example, they were classically taught and they knew the basic rules of how to draw before they ever decided to go into more of a looser abstract style, like Picasso, <laughs> or even Van Gogh. Van Gogh is another excellent example of an artist, a classically trained artist who became very abstract. As we all know, he's one of the most famous painters that ever lived. But it's a good foundation for you to start from, no matter what you choose to do, so that you have more control over the possibilities of your work. So one way that I do that is um, I like to learn from people that have a classical background. One person on YouTube who's really great for that is uh, an artist named Stephen Bauman. He's on YouTube and I think he's got his own website, Patreon. He gives so much. He used to be um, a teacher, a professor at the uh, Florence Academy of Art in Florence and then in America. Um, and he's since moved on because he's become very successful and popular. And he's a very giving teacher. He even does one-on-one -on -one type classes uh, that you can pay for by Patreon. I have done that myself with him. Not that I am a super realist. I just, I like to be able to know things. I like to understand drawing better as good as possible. And, um, but one of the things that I do is um, I have a book where I do simple studies of leaves very accurately. So the method that they often start you off in, in classical drawing, and when I say classical drawing, what I mean by that is it's the style of drawing that was taught to the old masters. There's a collection, of, there's a book called The Barg Method, and um, it was taught back in the days, in the 1800s, based off a foundation that was taught for many years, that all the great masters that we know of today were taught from that classical drawing method. So I used that and came up with a very simple way to where I could draw any time I wanted to, um, as long as I had my little moleskin book. Um, what I do is I pick up random leaves like I actually found this leaf recently and I pressed it for you. So the one rule I would have, I would say for this book is that um, your leaf either has to be a dried leaf, if you're gonna take a while to really study it, or it can only be green and fresh um, if you do it right away. Because the, when a leaf dries, it starts moving its shape and changing. Um, but you could do this to start with, press your own leaf so it's nice and flat and simple and not difficult to do. Um, but I like doing more dimensional leaves myself. So this is an example of my book. Some of the leaves I've done. So the site size method is basically you draw exactly what you see. And you start using a form of measurement to figure out the dimensions of everything, the angles, how far things are away from just doing all these minor little adjustments and uh, measurements as you go. But the quickest way to do that is 
to in in the book to get started doing that is to lay the leaf right next to what you're drawing like this is not this is not the leaf that I drew but if I drew my my leaf when I put, when I did draw it I'd either put it on the table in front of me or on the book itself if I could get it to lay flat enough and then I would just start measuring it you could use your pencil or a knitting needle that sort of thing and just start measuring here's the height how how tall the leaf is compared to the width of it and then you just want to match that and you can make the leaf the exact same size as it is laying right next to you but the more classically drawn artists do that with a model in front of them and they do the same thing sight size measuring the length to the height to the, to the various um, distances of different points on the body that they're trying to measure and use that to interpret it to, to classically draw. That can be a very long, detailed, multiple day, week process if you do a really highly realistic drawing, but it's a great skill to learn. But this is a very simple way to learn those same skills and to help yourself grow. And, but I don't want you to be intimidated by it. And if you're interested in this, I already have a video. Um, if you look back in my videos, showing me doing a, a drawing of some leaves and things I found and I draw it and then I do like a picture again of watercolor and gouache. So if you're interested in that, you can go back and watch that video. Sometimes the leaves I draw in here, I really love so much that I even keep them like I loved this drawing of these two leaves that are hugging and I kept it. So I just think that they're beautiful and I would actually like to do a more complex study of them, maybe larger next time if I ever get to it. There's always so much to do when you have ideas. But I really like that um, particular page. Sometimes I'll add a little Prismacolor that doesn't always turn out well, though sometimes it fails. And sometimes the Prismacolor works just right, and it's nice and light, and, and I like it. So. so this is just a method that I'm going to be sharing some more about, too. Showing, I'm going to do a video showing uh, how I specifically do this. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll work on getting that video put together for you. Another thing that I wanted to share with you today was I wanted to share the books I have that I would recommend um, possibly for learning how to draw better. So the first book that I want to share with you is a really old book. I've had this book since I was a child and believe it or not they still sell it on Amazon. <laughs> and I'm in my 50s. So but the reason why they still sell this book is because it is amazing. It is packed with all the basics on drawing you will ever want to learn. But it does look like a 1950s book. I It probably was maybe even made then. I think it was an old book when I bought it, or my parents bought it for me when uh, I was a teenager. Let's see if I can show this book a little better. Um, I'm going to do a flip through from this angle and I'll try to do an overhead for you. Um, this book is packed with all kinds of measurement tools and information on muscles and how things are drawn, um, measurements, how the body's supposed to look. Every page is just packed with the basics of drawing. So it's, it's very... I think it's a very helpful book. Everything from starting on how to draw the basics of a face all the way down to more complicated measurements of the body and the muscles and the bones and everything. So this is a great book and I think it's fairly cheap. Probably not as cheap as when my parents bought it, but it's pretty cheap. <laughs> Another book I wanna recommend is any book by Juliet Aristides. This is a great little book here. This beginning drawing atelier book. Um, it is packed with the drawings of some of the best artists 
that we have now, including Julio Reyes, who's this beautiful graphite color of this um, bird on a, a bunch of wood. So beautiful. Leaf studies again. That's Juliet doing leaf studies. Another Julio Reyes drawing. And again, just a book packed with information and thoughts on how to understand drawing and get better at drawing. There she is, practical leaves again. This is exactly what I do in my own leaf book. Drawing animals, pets. It's got places for you to do exercises. I'm kind of old fashioned about messing up my books, so <laughs> I don't do that in here. I do it on the side, but I think this is a really great book. It even talks about bark plates, and that's what bark plates look like. You have to learn how to draw this accurately so it looks exactly like this, studying all the basics of measurement and understanding uh, volume and values, etc. So it's a great book. And she's a great instructor. She also has workshops if you ever get a chance to do that. If you love watercolors, I highly recommend anything by Mary White. This is a great book. She's also an instructor, although I'm not sure she does it as much anymore. But she is an amazing watercolorist. In my opinion, as far as living watercolorist, one of the best. Um, at least the ones of the ones I know, <laughs> she's the best. And I think this is a really great, helpful book. And she just talks about her own style and how you can understand how watercolor works and the things that she does in her own practice. This book is a massive book, but if you love still lifes, it's huge. This is by Todd Casey. It's a fairly new book. Um, also has a lot of beautiful work by major artists living today. It's hard to show you this from this angle, but you can see that you can see in this book that it's just again got a lot of beautiful photographs references ideas and concepts on painting and drawing still life so highly recommend that book i think he's coming out with a second book but i think this one has it all that i would ever need another great book is this book on figure drawing um, by by Robert Seller. It's also a large book and also has a lot of amazing drawings to inspire you. And um, I think it's a great reference book. With that being said, I guess we'll get into the sketchbook and show you this week's update to my work on the sketchbook challenge. So this week's sketchbook challenge. So where we left off last week was right about here. Um, working on onions and things. I don't think this was the very last page that I worked on, but the next thing I did was a leaf study. Let's see if you can see from this angle. That's basically what that leaf was, the one that I chose to do. It takes longer than you think. But um, that's what I chose to do for that first day next last week. And then I went on to do this, which is um, another quick master study. This study is a partial copy because the book cover that I have is like this. Um, and the artist is Kate Elizabeth Bunce, which I don't think she's as I don't think she's as well known, but I really love the painting, so I gave it a shot in my sketchbook. It's nothing amazing, it's not exact, it's just fine. It's okay. Then I went on to work on doing this waterhouse painting, which was an epic failure. An epic, epic failure. This girl's face I had the worst trouble with. The painting in general, I don't know why I had the worst trouble with. Her face became really dark and once it got dark with the gouache, 
it was so hard to fix it and it's still not right it's still it's still like partially done and again this is only a partial study of one of the famous british artists jw waterhouse he's got a lot of famous paintings that are amazing unfortunately i don't think i've ever had the fortune to see any of them in person if i ever get back to England again, London. I am definitely going to go. I can't remember if it's at the Tate or where most of his work is at, but I want to go and see them in person, but fingers crossed on that. Another art trip, eventually. Then I return to John Singer Sargent to do this lady. I thought I'd give it a shot. I liked the romantic style of her reclining um, in the grass reading a book. It's very beautiful and soft and I love all of his soft brush strokes. The next thing I did was I just did a still life. So this is a vase, a little, it's actually a little glass vase for bulbs that I have. I bought this at uh, Monticello many years ago and um, I have a little plant in it right now that I love this amber color of the glass and the reflection of the light through it. So I did a, a quick study of that one day. I watched a really fascinating documentary on YouTube about an artist named Joan Erdley. I am not familiar with this artist, but until this past week, and just the story of her very short life. She passed away very early at the age of 42 from breast cancer. But she had done some amazing landscape uh, paintings that I saw and just learned about her life. And this was her house and I saw it online and I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. I love places with um, just these, I don't know if you would call this the English style of garden, but all the tall flowers and things and her beautiful little house that's in Scotland that still exists. I thought it was really beautiful and so I done a, a, a screenshot from that documentary and did this quick little drawing in my sketchbook. And then the last day I went back and revisited this study um, that I've done before. I've done this, I've done this study both in my nature journal and I've gone out in the field and painted this tree. I've taken lots of photos so I used all those references and decided to give it another shot in my journal and I'm fairly happy with it but it's still again fairly quick but I really like the way the sky turned out I think I got lucky with this guy because it was three different colors it went from yellow to pink to purple because um, it was very late at night and they have the distant clouds that um, were turning purple um, so yeah I was pretty happy with that so Okay guys, I guess that's all I have for you this week. Um, I hope that you go back and see if you wanna check out that one video on how to draw a leaf that I have, um, or one of my earlier videos on, on um, how I'm starting my sketchbook challenge and what I've done along the way the past few weeks to catch up. So thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with us for our studio chat today. And I wish you all well. Have a great, beautiful, and blessed week ahead. <laughs>